Hi, I'm Dr. Ritter. I'm faculty here in the biology department. Uh, we're out here in the dome area, the palmetum area, the nursery area. We're actually here to start uh, an educational series. The series we're going to be talking about is waste management. No, not throwing away trash. We're talking about your waste and how to manage your waste and weight. Okay, and since we're out here and we have two helpers here, what can you tell me about, first of all, what plant is this? This is um, sage, and sage is actually native to uh, the Mediterranean region. We're just picking and weeding it right now. Okay, I noticed with the uh, sage here, it's growing in a block area. Why? What, what is the purpose of this? Well, mainly because it keeps the, the weeds from reaching the sage and also because it confines it to an area so you know that it's growing better and you can actually choose the type of soil to use it with and yeah, you can find it to an area. Okay, so basically, so we're growing sage here. Uh, how old is this? How long has this been in the ground here? Well, since February, so around eight months. Okay, and why are you out here? What brought you out here to do this? Just being nice, friendly people? The f -Cage program. Um, oh, what is the f -Cage program? Well, it stands for, it's a very long name. It's the Florida Caribbean Consortium for Agricultural Education for Hispanic Workforce. So it's a very long name, but it actually helps us out and gain research experience, and we're actually more engaged with the environment, with the students, with the community, and we're here in the garden. That's, this is where we do our hours of community service and our, our, our garden hours. Okay, so community service hours, what? So you're out here working for community service? Is there, what else are you doing with the program? We also have, uh, part of our program is also a research experience. We're required 10 hours a month of research experience. So a lot of us are also conducting research out here. Um, I know part of my research is going to be uh, with the plants on these raised, raised beds. So a lot of us are actually out here, not only for community service hours, but also for our own research as well. Uh, okay, I was also told with the program there's a summer component. There is. We have an internship in the summer that we are required to do, um, and we are actually able to go out to different USDA agencies and work with uh, the, the agency themselves. Okay, so if someone else is interested in this, how long is this going to be going on for? Uh, three more years. Actually, we're on a, a grant for three years. Yes. So. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so if people are interested, come on down and join us. You can work out here. You can help out. Okay, we're at the sage again. Uh, how many is this? I mean, okay, if I were going to harvest this, how would I harvest it? it would, um, well, you have do to I just pick the leaf? Do I pick the whole stem? Or what do I do? You have to pick the stem with the, with the leaf because okay. you want, you want um, to have more than one leaf because you don't know um, how good it is yet. So... When you pick out the leaf, you don't pick the leaf itself. You pick out the whole stem. You get a good amount. And you have to make sure that it's all healthy. Like, this is a good bunch. Mm -hmm. And then it's where you can actually pick out the leaf because that stem is not actually quite needed, but you need it to actually get it out of the, of the bed. Okay. And you can, leave it, you can get it to the kitchen, and you can wash the leaves out. And you can, that's the, mm -hmm. It's the leaves that you use for cooking when you're yeah. using for keep. I also noticed here when you made the cut that it's been cut before. So mm -hmm. if you cut back, it keeps growing? It keeps growing, yes. Oh, wonderful. So how long would this, and this, act, oh, w when did you start this bed? February. Okay, so this was growing out here during the summer? Yes, it's been growing since, well, we started like first with um, putting the actual soil in the bed. Uh, we use a very sp special type of soil. It, um, I, it's, it has mycorrhizae in it, okay. I believe, and it's, micro, micro, what, what are they? It's it's a type of fungi, and it actually has a symbiotic um, uh, a, a relationship with the plants. So it helps out the plants while the plants help out the fungi. It's I thought fungi was bad. Well, it depends. Uh, it depends the relationship that you're talking about because this this specific relationship it. Each other, help, it, it, they help each other out. Great, so not all fungus is bad. That's no, great, not okay. No, fungus is bad. Good to know. Mycorrhizae actually um, produces glomalin, which helps with um, soil integrity as well. Yeah. So oh, okay, so we're actually improving the soil too? Definitely, yes, yeah. that's 
Terrific. Okay. So we have the sage. So you cut it, it'll grow back. We u we utilize the leaf. Uh, you guys, how much longer are you going to be out here with the program? Um, I'm in it for another two years. <laughs> okay, another two years. Have you done your research yet? Yes, I actually did this summer uh, at, at the USDA um, Subtropical Research Station, ARS. It's in Candle area, and I actually worked with bugs, like how they were infesting the mangoes. So oh. I was working with the mangoes, yeah. Okay, so it's all kinds of kinds of research, yes. horticultural, agricultural research you can get involved with. Yes, you can. You can not only work with the plants, you can work with uh, with with animals. You can work with bugs. So it's a very broad range because we're talking about rural. We're talking about agricultural. Cultural is actually uh, more than just plants and meat. So it's pretty interesting. I actually okay, didn't know that great. before then. Okay, we're actually going to be taking the herbs inside and using it for cooking. Can you cut us some, please? Okay, so basically, how long of a, how big of a stem do you cut? Um, just a good amount down, so you get enough of the leaves. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> a good amount, matter. I'm assuming, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, a few inches down. Okay. Because you also want to leave enough of the stem so that it keeps growing back. Okay. Because that's what you want. You don't want to kill the completely the sage plant. Oh, okay. Well, please get us some. Is this oh, enough? No, we want a bunch. Come on, we're hungry. <laughs> okay. Oh, so so you're taking the new growth. Okay, I see that. Great. So it can actually grow back. Okay. I want a bunch. Come on. <laughs> please, please. Thank you. More, please. Okay. Why you guys were? I have a question. I see you guys wearing gloves. Why? Well, no, I'm just curious. I mean, is, is this going to hurt my hand? No, we have no. a very large population <laughs> of fire ants here. Yes. And <laughs> when we give it to you, it usually doesn't have the ants. But while we're going down and getting grabbing the plants, we might come into contact with some of these little buddies of ours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so you weren't to protect your hands. Okay. Yes. Yes. As long, long as I'm safe. You're perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. That's it? That's all you're giving me? More. Look at all the sage you have here. Come on. You just have to make sure, you just have to, make sure to grab the, the ones. Like, mm -hmm. for example, um, uh, there's some right here. Like this one, it's, it's, already, it's already dead. You okay. Don't want, you don't want to use that for cooking because you want to actually give a good flavor to your meats and to your pasta sauce. Okay. Well, I'm not the one that's going to be doing the cooking, so I'm really not sure how much he wants, but... You know, I figure we're better off having more than, you know, having too much than not enough. Okay, so, yeah, I think that should probably do it. I guess she's still there. There you go. Okay, now with this bed, uh, since I have the sage, to get it to look like this, are there... Uh, weeding problems, uh, watering, how often should I water, how often should I weed, how often should I fertilize? Well, watering, um, it's not so much, you, you don't have to be on top of them as much. Uh, you just have to make sure they get their, um, their bit of water every day. So and herbs can take it on the dry side? Herbs can take, yeah. Terrific, nice, good, good plant, good plant for the summer. Okay, what else? So well, since since they're on the Mediterranean side, they grow on the you're um they're very tropical. Okay, so we can take it dry. How about fertilizer? Uh, you don't actually need to fertilize them as much. I want herbs. I wonderful. So I don't need to water. I don't need to fertilize. They take full sun. They can grow during the summer. Terrific. Thank you. We have the herbs. I think I'm gonna run over now <laughs> to the kitchen and see what they can do with it. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Awesome.
Miami-Dade College. Eight campuses, seven bachelor degrees. Miami-Dade College is the largest institution of higher education in the United States. With eight campuses and seven bachelor degrees, Miami-Dade College has the right education for you. Film, television, and digital production, health science, public safety management, supervision and management, education, electronic engineering technology, and nursing. Eight campuses, seven bachelor degrees. Miami-Dade College, the power of opportunity. Fresh thinking is being served at Miami-Dade College. Create your own recipe for success in the evolution of food culture at the Miami Culinary Institute. Learn the skills you need to jumpstart your career in the culinary arts. Turn green into gourmet and celery into salary. Miami Culinary Institute. Food. Culture. Innovation. Visit us at MiamiDadeCulinary.com. Register now. Miami Culinary Institute. Hi, Tim. I'm in from the herb garden. I brought you the sage you requested. Now, teach me. I want to know what to do with this stuff. Oh, Stephen. All yours. Well, thank you, Stephen. And I'm going to, my name's Tim Patton. As you know, Stephen, we're going to talk about nutrition. Okay. Where you're outgrowing this stuff, hence have often been said you're outstanding in your field. Eh. We're going to show you how to use this for food preparation. Now, one big thing about nutrition, much like horticulture, is that it's a science but it's a science that has application or use. So students who take your courses learn something about horticulture, but then can go home and use it. They can improve their yard, they can improve the growth of the tree in the backyard, they can grow herbs. So and we can actually grow it, and then you're gonna teach then us how to utilize it. in nutrition, we're a science called mm -hmm. the chemistry of life, but it's very relevant because everybody's going to eat. In fact, there's an old quote that says, Medicine is something some of the people need some of the time. Nutrition is something everybody needs all of the time. Okay. And that's where we're going to get herbs in in just a second. But it's very important to understand that nutrition is what you eat, it's also what you don't eat. That then leads to either your wellness or the lack thereof, illness. Okay. And about 85% of adults in America will end up with a nutrition-related problem mostly due to their weight, i.e. waist size. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what we're concerned with is obviously getting in the things that will keep you well without getting in the things that make you ill. Herbs have always been part of that description. They have things in them that keep you well, but they replace things that we've added to the diet that make you less well unfortunately obese as well. Like what? Well, they have, like in sage, sage has been used forever. Okay? This is like one of the most common, in fact, it's labeled one of the eight top healthiest herbs in the world. It's been used for things like adding to our diet. It has folic acid, it has vitamin C, it has vitamin A, it has magnesium, it has potassium. See, I get excited about this. Mm -hmm. And it has a flavor. So by using sage... It does have a flavor. It does have a flavor that some people love, and some people will try to find how to spit out the sage <laughs> as they're chewing it. No, it's but good. it's very important that we have this kind of thing that we can use in place of to provide and subtract all at the same time. Now, the original uses for sage were actually medicinal. They were considered more of a medicine than anything added to food, and the top medical reason for using these were sore throats. It was also, in history, used for something else. Oh yeah, memory, that's a joke. <laughs> but then... What were you talking about? I'm saying, yeah, I know. Give me more. Give me, yeah. <laughs> but then, over time, it sort of got the reputation of a panacea, used for everything. In fact, one of the things it was used for, you'll be glad to know as you're chewing it, is to kill bacteria in the oral cavity and to freshen breath. Go figure. Yeah, <laughs> it's not working. Okay. Now, when we use sage, there's two different ways that we use it. Either in total whole leaf form okay. or chopped up. 
And when it's chopped up, we can either use it fresh or dried. And when we chop it, you'll see that drying it is real easy. You just spread it out, put it in the sun, come back later before it rains, and you have dried sage. So what I gave you there has stem also, so the stem is no good. The stem is really not part of the edible part. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the things you can use the whole leaf for, and this is pretty cool, you can make large containers of tea. Okay? In fact, you take the leaf off the stem, take a bunch of leaves, and you put it in not necessarily boiling water, but warm water, and the best way to do it is called sun tea. Question. So I saw what you did is, so you don't even use the petiole, you don't use the base, just the... Just the leaf. So just the leafy part. Right. Okay. Okay. I can now, do that. one of the things you can use the leaf for, and it's fairly prominent, is in cooking. If you take a bunch of the leaves and spread it on the bottom of something you might be cooking, it's close to Thanksgiving, a turkey would be a great example. If you spread the leaves on the bottom and lay the turkey on before you've roasted it, put some of the whole leaves on top of the turkey, you can literally baste it in a sage turkey type of a flavor. It'll taste sagey? It'll taste sagey as it sort of permeates up in the cooking, especially if you use a cooking bag I don't know if you've ever used one of those, but you close it off to keep the turkey moist. How about inside? Inside. One of the very famous recipes for sage is actually called cornbread sage dressing. And literally, it, it is not where we mince it completely. But if you just take it and rip some of the leaves, throw it in the cornbread dressing, you come out with a wonderful stuffing for your sage turkey. Mm. Now, in the sort of in the rest of what you could do if it wanted to be for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, one of the uses is actually a fresh garden salad where you use the sage as you would prepare the, the salad leaves. Arugano, spinach, even iceberg. If you take the sage, I'll take off this little end, and as you're ripping the salad, most people know to make a salad you have to rip carefully the leaves so you don't bruise what you're ripping. Time out. Yes. <laughs> okay. I just cut it up and throw it in. <laughs> okay. What's wrong? Well, it'll, it'll wilt faster that way. I eat it right away. Okay. <laughs> go fast. I there know. you go. <laughs> well, if you take the sage leaves and rip them with the other leaves of the salad, they literally blend in, and then when you toss the salad, they become part of the distribution. On top of that goes a sage vinaigrette dressing. Quick and easy. You take sage that's chopped up, and we're going to get to that in a second. You let it soak in oil. Any oil will do. Olive oil is great. Motor oil? Except motor oil. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're right. Not every oil. You got, you got me on that one. And letting the sage sit in oil is kind of a great idea for later on, when I get to some of the mm -hmm. other usage. But then, after it sort of permeates the oil, you can take it, mix it with vinegar, and add some other. Do you strain it before nope. you use the oil? No, you don't. How long do you let it sit in the oil? You know, it could be a couple days. It could be a day. If nothing else, at least an hour or so. And what you're looking for are some of the fat-soluble um, flavoring agents to leach out into the oil so mm. it sort of distributes around the salad. Okay? So whole sage has its usage. Again, tea. A uh, wrapper, meats, it can be anything from poultry like turkey all the way to lamb. So for tea, I would use this whole leaf? If you were making a large tea that would then be something you save like for iced tea, uh, uh, iced herbal tea. Mm -hmm. Now, the rest of the usages are after we chop it. And that's what we're going to do here. And one of the primary, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you go ahead and take the leaves off and chop them up while I sort of go on the rest. One of the, the most famous of all of the usage of sage tea that's been recorded back to the time of Hippocrates, the Hippocratic Oath, the beginning of medicine as we know it. Uh, Hippocrates was big on herbs and plant-based medicinal remedies. Sage was one of his favorite in the form of hot tea, hot okay. herbal tea. Perfect. Now, if you go ahead and chop that, I don't even think you need that on, but if you do, what you'll find is that 
you can make the tea, if you like herbal tea, and just sort of go wild on it. Go crazy, like, yeah, that's it. Okay. I think almost everybody has a food chopper at home. If not like this, then it's like the youngest child in the family. Oh, and I steal this chopper. one, I'll have one at yeah, home. You yeah, you have one at home. <laughs> well, as you chop it up, you sort of can start smelling more of the aroma of the sage. And this is what is going to leach in and become the tea essence. Now, for sore throats, so we're talking hypocrisy, that's the Greeks, that's oh, a couple thousand years ago. Sage herbal tea with lemon and honey have been used as one of the teas. And that's fine for Your right now. Your chopper stinks. Well, you know, yes, he does, but nevertheless. <laughs> Look. Okay. It did okay. not chop. Okay. What you would do, if it had, in that's where that comes in, is you would take the leaves, stick them in a tea ball, and anyone who drinks tea, whether it's regular tea from tea leaves, or whether it's something you're going to make yourself from herbs, it's quick and simple. You just sort of put it all in there. It's even if you use the whole leaves, it's going to come out. Stick that together. Put that in a cup of boiling hot water. Let it sit. Now, it comes out a kind of unique color. If you're used to regular brown tea, it comes out sage. Excuse the puns. But it has that sage green color to it. You add honey and lemon, and you have the oldest remedy for sore throats in, his, in medicine, in medical history. Now, a couple other things that it goes well with. One is something called beans. Let's see. We're in Miami-Dade, Florida. Do you think anybody in Miami-Dade, Florida has ever prepared beans? No. Well, sage happens to be a traditional old flavoring. It goes great. There's a very popular dish called white bean sage tomato salad. It is exactly what it sounds like. It is white beans. It has the chopped sage. It has chopped tomatoes. It has white wine vinegar. White wine vinegar is the white plain vinegar that everybody has around in place. They need vinegar to clean something with. You just mix it up and you've got one of the sort of traditional recipes. For Thanksgiving, one that is, again, quick and easy, most people might not think of, is pumpkin soup. Okay, I want to thank you for teaching us about use of sage, the herb, and for hopefully fixing that in the future. Anyway, in the future, we are going to be actually having quite a few more shows. We're going to be talking about herbs, different types of herbs, how to grow them, and then how to use them in the kitchen, hopefully nutritional use, hopefully methods to keep this down, waste management, W-A-I-S-D. Okay, also, uh, if a person wants to learn more about this, how would they go about it? Probably the best way is to take one of our classes, either in horticulture or in nutrition. And they're offered when? All the time. Terrific. Yeah, every semester, many times a semester. Okay, so we look forward to seeing you here.